Well, she's all rubbed down, washed down and prepped, ready for a coat and primer. Very soon, all this side will be red. As you've just been told, I've already prepped the sides. I used an electric sander, it was a 230 volt off my little petrol generator. It's an orbital one. Um, I started with 80 grit to get rid of the really rough areas, especially for the brush marks as well. They were quite deep when they'd been laid off. Um, I then used the 120 grit um, just to flat off the paint and get rid of any shine that was left. I washed it down a couple of times and then left it to dry. Once it was dry, my first job was to do a thing called cutting in. Um, it's usually done by brush. And it means well, basically I'm applying paint to areas such as internal corners or around the frames, as you can see there, um, such as windows and doors, etc. Basically anywhere a roller can't be used. Once I've cut in round everything that needs cutting in round, um, I then used a gloss roller. Well, it was a foam roller on a little mini frame um, and I just put it in a tray, the paint that is and then dip my roller in and roll it onto the surface that I was painting, which is the sides of the boat. Um, as you can see, I'm using quite a random pattern there. Um, it doesn't really matter about laying off this because I'm gonna rub down this coat before I put the second coat of primer on. Um, during the Crick um, debacle that I went on, I did manage to go and see a seminar on painting the boat and it's marine paintings a little bit different from what you'd normally do in a domestic situation um, and they'd recommended that it was two coats of primer um, two different colors so the first coat goes on it gets a light rub down a D nibbing the second coat goes on and that gets a good rub down to show up any areas that are, are problematic so they can be treated and fixed filled and all that malarkey um, before you put on the final coats I'm not going to bother putting an undercoat on, you don't really need one because the uh, waterproofing coat is the primers so two coats of primers are good enough to give me the, the um, waterproofness that I need if that's a word even. <laughs> what um, generally people seem to think that the top coats are the waterproof coats, they're not really. Um, there's a big misconception about paints and things like that. Paints are a sacrificial coating and basically they sacrifice, sacrifice themselves for the substrate underneath, be it metal, plaster, cement, whatever it is. So I'm not too bothered about um, going overboard with the undercoat and things like that. Well, it's just about finished with that and it's probably looking like it's the end of the day. I can't remember if it rained or not. I didn't really write that down. Should have done probably. But it looks pretty good. It was a good solid covering. Day two, bitterly regret starting doing this side. I'm absolutely knackered, I'm aching all over anyway. Today's jobs, re -black the hull, go around the other side and prime the uh, side of the, the top of the boat and then come back around this side and put red primer on there. The weather's supposed to be with us today but we're not sure. See how it goes. In the last episode of watching paint dry, you will have seen that I did the blacking of the hull by brush. That was the first coat. I used the brush to work in all the blacking coating into any areas such as deep pits or anything like that. There weren't too many, it took ages to do, but I got a good coverage for the second coat. I'm just using a roller, I'm only brushing in the areas which need cutting in, where I don't want to get paint all over the place. So there we are, roller in away, it's a lot quicker. So I'm just going to show you what I did around this little section here. What I did is I got my, uh, the wheel that I used to kick the back of the boat off the side of the lanky. Um, I used that as my template to make um, the curve 
for the end here. Um, I used an old kettle for this one. Anyway, for this one, yeah, I did that and I marked it with pencil. I can just about see the line. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So I'm just going to show you what I do when I'm cutting in. So I've got a big brush. You can use a smaller one if you're a bit less, um, shall we say, confident with your skills. But whenever you do it, dip in and instead of wiping it off, just tap on the thing. And you see there's a lot of paint on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make this curve. There you go it's not perfection but it's good enough for me that'll uh, look good once I get the primer on here the red primer and go across there you know so I'm not doing this bit yet I'm doing this last of all because I'm going to do this whole section just in case the rain turns up I want to get the side of the boat done so that's the next big job we're getting there so for this side of the boat the starboard side of the boat um, I'm using the same technique as I did on the other side there you go look. I wish it was going as fast as that at the time it took quite a while to do but it was quicker than brushing it anyway I've gone all the way across there um, and I've left that swim just in case it rains the band above um, that I'm not painting with the blacking um, the gunnels bit I'm going to use a different type of paint for that which um, I'll show you later on uh, this section of the boat, the bow of the boat here, you can see is the original steel. You can just see on the left hand side of the screen there um, where the overplating ends. Um, th I managed eventually to get that button off, um, so I've given it three coats and it looks pretty smart actually. It's in good condition really. And there we are, finally I'm going to do the swim there and the Uxter plate. I think it's called an Uxter plate. Please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but yeah, we're doing that underneath part there. And there we are. I'm just on the port side now, finishing that off, and it all looks very smart. That's the second coat completed. Just one more to go, and again, I'll use the roller for that one. It's just a bit of me uh, prepping the starboard side. As you can see, there's a few spots of rust on there and flaky paint. So I used a just a, a normal scraper to get rid of the really bad bits. Um, and then I used a wire brush just to clean them up before I sanded everything. As you can see, I'm sanding and scraping as I'm going along. And, and I'm doing it by hand, so I make it even more difficult for myself. Um, my arms were dropping off by this time. I was really fed up. But um, anyway, we got it all done and we gave it a wash down. And that was pretty much the end of day two. I think it was day two. I can't even remember what day we're on now anyway. But um, I gave it a really good rub down and um, she looked super smooth after she was done. This starboard side actually was better than the um, port side. Um, I'm not sure why really. I seem to think that we spend most of our time with the... Uh, starboard side towards the towpath which usually gets more of the weather but anyway there we are
day three probably and as you can see um, I'm just cutting in the primer I, f I didn't film that bit of me priming the starboard side because you'd seen me do the port side anyway um, I'm using a grey primer to go over the top as I was explaining earlier on what I was doing was I was using the first coat of primer was a red um, then the second coat was going to be a different colour so that when I rubbed it down any imperfections would be shown up there I'm putting it on again cutting in around all the frames and then the internal corner to the gunnels there and then using a roller to apply the primer it's day three I'm absolutely wiped out <laughs> last day for the blacking um, I've got to call up a surveyor today as well and have a look at this um, hull um, maybe see if he can come out and give it a, a survey um, and then I've got the top half of the boat the sides to faff about with hopefully get a top coat on the, at least a primer maybe a top coat as well the weather's not forecast to be great today but um, we're gonna give it our best shot <clears throat> the very least I can do is uh, wet and dry all the sides down um, where the top coat paint is going on but we'll see it'll look a lot slower today on the hyperlapse as you can see I'm using my sander today because I was uh, running out of arm strength and I've got my generator there which I had to keep moving along because I forgot my extension lead but there we go so I'm giving it just a light rub over um, and then concentrating on little areas using hand sanding once again I give it a wipe down with the damp cloth well wash it down um, and let it to dry before I start with the top coat this is the port side of the boat, um, which means the left hand side if you're standing at the back. Yeah, that's dried out now, so I'm um, starting by cutting in with the top coat. And as you can see, I'm using the same colour as was on before. It's like a royal blue. Um, I forget the RL number, I'll dig it out sometime and put it at the end. Out. Well, I'll let you know what paints I've used right at, at the end in another video. But again, I'm cutting in with a brush and then using a roller um, just to apply the top coat. Now, I've got to keep it going pretty quick here. It was quite sunny, quite warm, um, and the gloss paint was quite old. Um, I used a uh, Rylard paint, which came with a boat, so it's as old as God's dog. I'll tell you how old it was. It was about 13 quid for a litre tin. They're about 40 quid now. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fairly old, but I managed to get it on without too much of a hassle um, and I'm not laying off because I was going to wet and dry between coats I'm going to do two to three coats um, at this moment in time that was in my head that I was going to do and I'm doing the whole side one colour I'm not going to bother um, cutting into different lines and different shades and different colours and things because there's a red band that goes across the top and um, a boxing in line all the way around so it's just a single coat when I rub it down, it'll show up all them lines and I can put my tape to those lines afterwards. But there he goes. Um, it wasn't this quick in real life. <laughs> I was starting to get tired. There we are. That's the top sides done. Um, I've just left that little square at the back. That's where I, I use a black colour where Laura's name goes. I'm uh, painting the gunnels bit there with that different type of paint from the blacking um, I'll let you all know what it was right at the end um, when I do a full um, breakdown of what materials are used and what tools are used and all that sort of stuff um, it goes on pretty easy this stuff and it's easy to touch up it's sort of a semi matte finish it was less shiny actually than the blacking itself and it went on quite easy and uh, covered over really well and it's pretty hard wearing it, it looks pretty good even now after a few months of um, treading all over it, it still looks in good nick. So in the surveyor's report, he says I've got a bit of a ding in one of my propeller blades. Let's have a look, see which one it is. Eh? Well, it's not that one, that one's got a chunk out, but it's not that one. 
that one looks okay there's a bit of a ding there and oh that's the one there look at that might not look like it but that's a bit of a ding that so i better get a hammer out and give it a good belt not too hard obviously we don't want to snap it that's that job there to do and then i've got the weed hatch to do just to uh, put the tape on so it gets a good seal around and the other thing i've got to do which i've forgotten all about we're going in the bottom tomorrow is that red stripe there so i better get on that as well there we go next job on the list is knocking that ding out of that propeller there oh, no, notice there's a, a ding on the other one as well but i'm going to get this one out first and what i'm going to use is i'm going to use this big lump hammer as me stock and then i'm going to hit it with a teeny tiny little hammer there toffee hammer and we'll see how it goes i'll put it down here So it's the bottom one with a little black mark on there. This doesn't work. I'll have to get another hammer. I'm not left-handed. Starting to move. Smidgey more. Gonna need a bigger hammer. Granted, it's not much bigger, but it's bigger. Okay. I think that'll do for now. I don't want to go mad. Still does curve out ever so slightly, but it's better than it was. One thing I had forgotten about was that blooming red stripe and uh, as we only had one more day to go I needed to get painting um, before it went back in the water. So there we go, I just did it by brush because it was a small area and it looks pretty smart that. Can you see me? Anyway, this is my weed hatch. It's up to you snot in your nose love, you oh, do it well. Ooh. My fault. I've the grandkids. <laughs> we'll go again. I'll leave that being. Anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just crack on, eh? Um can't see your face. Can you not see my face? No, you didn't see your face on any of that. Right, okay. Well you should have said that while I was doing it. Well, no, because I thought you'd just say, I mean, I've interrupted again. No, no. We'll see you now. Is it still recording? Right, oh, so this is Narrowboat Laura's weed hatch. Um, it's upside down at the minute because normally it's the other way around and in the engine room um, But I've blacked it given it three coats of blacking and then the top plate Which is this bit here both sides. I've done with white and um, hammerite paint a bit like the engine bay What I've got to do is according to the surveyor hull surveyor who came um, is 
put some tape round this again because the old stuff was a bit old knackered and, and needed renewing um, and it's apparently very important because water could get in and sink my boat so we don't want that do we um, so I've bought this tape all the way from Midland Chandlers and I'm just going to put that around the perimeter of the uh, weed hatch of the underside of the lid and then I'll peel back that that stuff um, and stick it on and all being well that should stop any water getting in my weed hatch yeah well better crack on There we are, that's one bit done. Just got the rest to do now. So I'm doing is peeling back a little bit like that and you see it's just a bit shiny, sticky stuff there. So I'm gonna place that carefully on there and just follow the edge of the top plate like that. And as I'm going along, I'm pulling out the protective film and just dropping everything there we go. now I'm not sure if that's to be absolutely perfect the gap or anything but we'll find out when she sends yeah I don't get it though ta-da there we are that's all done and dusted with a bit of luck she will uh, not leak but we won't know until she goes back in the water are we going to put that in a safe place that we can never find it again and have to buy some more yeah probably with the other stuff yeah <laughs> right i'll go and put her in position <laughs> how do you know which way it goes in because you know that top back black bit yeah it's kind of off center yeah i think the the big bit goes to the back right. of the boat to the stern of the boat um and so that you can pull that in and out easy so it's less at the front yeah um because the back lip is smaller than the front right so it's like half the size actually so most of that will be sat only probably that much of it will be sat on the plate so uh, anyway I'll go and bung her in and see how she looks yeah Oi. looks dreamy I'm going to ruin it all my put the big screw in the middle <laughs> what? oh yeah I've put some timber in and that but I'd rather have it holding on pretty good there she goes it's quite heavy as well. There we go. Let's get her in. Oh. Do you want something, Tango? Runs out. Fitted in a treat. There we are, all the tapes on, and you can see it just there, and she's back in position. And I got the right way around the first time. I'll have a look from underneath. Well, that's the end of that. We've got all the paint on, and we've now run out of time on the marina on the hard standing, so we've got to go back in the water. And that's exactly what we did. And we set off. Well, we weren't going far. We went to the side at Basin and stopped there for a couple of weeks. We had something going on. What was it we had going on? Was it a party or a do? Or a... It wasn't a wedding, was it? Oh, I've slept since then. I, I know. know. Never mind. It'll come to me eventually. Probably in about a week. Don't ask me in the comments because I'll probably not answer. I've oh. not got time at the minute. I'm mad busy. <laughs> Any road. Um... I think that's everything on my list done, so I reckon we'll call it a draw for this one. Till next time.